So can we please welcome to the Bavar Bar stage, Mr. Bill Maynard, who's going to talk about seeing the wood and the trees. Good evening. I uh, uh, feel that um, I'm in esteemed company with two previous speakers, so um, I hope this entertains you. Um, a couple of months ago, uh, Tim introduced the idea of, uh, of, 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 of symbols and, and, and asked what the, why the coastal paths have um, symbol of the oak, oak uh, acorn. Um, and that got me thinking, well, I've spent most of my professional life um, actually working on something which um, is a simple symbol which um, this little tick which turns into a tree, which is the trademark of the Forestry Stewardship Council. And um, I, well, that's, um, there's a, there's, a, it dates back to 1992, when a, a group of people tried to work out what sustainable forestry was all about. And uh, they came up with nine principles which they felt um, could uh, indicate what sustainable forestry was about, and that's in over time actually um, uh, been developed into 10 principles, 56 criteria, and hundreds and hundreds of indicators which are supposed to help the auditors um, define what is a, 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 a sustainable forest. And um, I don't know whether any of you here are auditors or tax inspectors or people who have to look under the rocks and see whether other people are doing a good job. Um, it, it is, um, I can tell you, as hard for the auditor as it is for the auditee, often, the whole process. Um, all you want is for a nice, clear, simple pass fail, yes, no, right, wrong, binary decision. Unfortunately, in um, tropical forestry, which is where I work mainly, um, there are an awful lot of subjective uh, elements rather than uh, nice, clear-cut, positive uh, or negative things. In 1996, Two years after the, the, the disease criteria had been um, uh, developed, I was asked to go to um, do the first audit in a natural tropical forest, uh, which was in a area just off the southwest corner of Kalimantan in Indonesia, off the island of Borneo. And this was quite a well-known or esteemed bit of forest because um, the Minister of Forestry at the time in Indonesia had been the, uh, the, the manager there. Um, and so we, uh, we were sent off. We really didn't know what to expect or what the process was going to be because uh, you know, it, 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 it had never been done in this sort of a, a forest before. Um, and uh, there were three of us there, and uh, we, we uh, were flown there from, uh, from Jakarta. It took us two days to get there. Uh, and as you may know, you always try and look after your auditors. You're always trying to impress them. So we are right, you know, and I think that the more I, whenever I come back to Europe, I think we're a very grumpy and um, not very polite group of people often. Southeast Asia people are far more gracious and, 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 and uh, we, you know, we, we were put up in very, uh, the, the best um, rooms in the logging camp. There was hot water, there were endless cups of tea, etc. Um, and uh, then the next, uh, on the day after we arrived, we went down about 30 kilometers into the forest to the, where the logging 
camp was rather than the research station. And uh, along the way, we saw an awful lot of water buffalo. Now, you see a lot of water buffalo in rice paddies, you see a lot of water buffalo in agricultural settings. You don't really see very many in forests. Um, and me and my two colleagues didn't really notice, mention it to one another, but we, 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 we were kind of thinking, that's, that's a little odd. Um, and uh, the next day, the three of us all went in, in different directions, came back that night, and uh, we sort of looked at one another and, said, uh, and shook our heads and said, there's something very wrong here. This is not what we expect a good, well-managed forest to be operating on. I mean, the, 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 um, uh, the production uh, expert had sort of uh, thought that the, the, the trees being marked were a little odd for ones for felling. The ecologist sort of was, was thinking, no, this is not sustainable. And I was doing the, the, the sort of working with the communities around the edge, and they were, they were very, very on edge. Well, it um, transpired by the end of day two, uh, we, we worked out that it was a massive illegal logging operation. And um, to the extent the camp manager uh, had actually been kidnapped for three days by the illegal loggers and uh, held in one of his own logging trucks. And uh, the guy from, who, who had accompanied us from Jakarta, who was from the, the sort of central office, got more and more embarrassed by, by this situation. We, you know, we, we were, we, we, we were, this was the minister's forest. And we were really seeing all the dirty, dirty laundry come out. Um, and uh, so we had to say after that we, we should have been there for a, another sort of 48 hours going through. So, and we said, you know, you've failed. We can't, there's, not, there was, there's, there's, there's no, nothing, no redeeming feature about this. And um, so we were moved pretty unceremoniously from the nice quarters to the very peripheral of the logging camp with no continual cups of tea and only cold water. And um, also, it was actually at two o'clock in the morning, you could he hear all the illegal loggers just taking the, <laughs> taking the logs out. But that was simple. That was, for us, nice and simple, definitive, fail, no problem. The only problem was for the guy who had accompanied us from Jakarta, for him going back and telling his bosses what had happened and why it had happened. And we may be rude in Europe, but in, a, uh, in Asia you're very deferential to the people above you. You don't tell them when there are problems. Um, so that was a bit of a problem for him. Um, the next audit I went on, uh, or uh, sometime a little bit later, uh, was um, in Thailand. And uh, what happens is, when you go first visit a forest, there are a big team, but then, then each year, there's only one of you goes in and you, uh, you just check that they're still doing the right thing. And sometimes you are told that, that the, the person who went in before may have identified a minor problem and you have to go and check out that they've found a way of resolving it. And uh, in Thailand we were, we were working in um, rubber wood plantations and uh, there, there were some very steep areas and the auditor previously um, had uh, identified that they were using heavy machinery on steep slopes. So, uh, I, you know, was one of the things I had to do was uh, say, well, how, how have you resolved this, this problem? And uh, this was actually in 2005, which, if you can remember, was the year after the tsunami. And so there were very few tourists there. And so they um, had actually gone and got three elephants 
who had spent most of their time working in tourist destinations, giving the tourists rides. And they brought these three elephants in, and they did a fantastic... Elephants in forests are just really delicate, no problem. Again, very easy. Tick. Problem solved. They've done it really nicely. Very easy for an auditor to, to, um, to uh, work out the solution. Uh, another time, I went to uh, a, uh, a peat swamp forest in Sumatra. Um, and uh, here, we, we, I, was, I was actually the team leader on that one. And uh, my, the, the guy who was doing the uh, social forestry disappeared on day one to go and start to talk to communities around the edge of the forest. Um, and he didn't come back for three days, which was a little worrying. There was no communication, no, no, no this was before uh, uh, mobile phones or anything. But he came back on day three and said, uh, it was all going fine, but um, there was some activity on the edge of the forest, on the, on the seashore, which uh, he thought I should go and check out. So I went to the management and I said, uh, how can I get there, you know, without spending three days getting there, I haven't got time. And they said, it's all right, we'll get you a boat tomorrow morning, you can go around the, around the coast. I go down to the jetty the next morning, and um, there's an Indonesian naval vessel with a 22 million millimeter cannon on the front. Uh, luckily, that's all covered in tarpaulin, and, and it's, it, it, you know, I'm not, I'm not being too kind of aggressive in what I do. And we, we go out and we go, we chug around. After about two hours, we see this, um, these three very large industrial warehouses, which have been, you know, what were carved out of the mangroves for forest. And sitting outside them, there are four speedboats, speedboats, each of which have four 80 horsepower um, uh, motors on them. And uh, it transpires that that is the Indonesian army doing a little bit of private enterprise, smuggling cigarettes from Indonesia across the Malacca Straits into Malaysia. So there am I, sitting on an Indonesian Navy vessel, looking at the Indonesian army doing an illegal project, pro product, trying to get the FSC logo onto B&Q broomsticks. <laughs> um, One time when I went to Sri Lanka, again, I, it was just a, 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 a sort of, it was just me, it was, and, and a previous auditor had identified a problem. There were wild boar there, and um, the problem was that the management were actually trying to trap the wild boar in a rather inhuman, inhumane way, and, and this was not considered sustainable. And they, so, so the auditor, the previous auditor, had said, you've got to find a different solution to your wild boar problem. Well, tough problem, because wild boars are big, and they're heavy, and you can't really uh, have fences or anything over very large areas than they were there, there. Um, so I said oh I, you know this is a problem how, how have you solved this problem and they said hair hair okay well how what how why you know well apparently wild boar do not like human hair when they're rooting, when they're rooting around, they kind of, you know, the human hair that gets up their nostrils and they don't like it and they disappear. Great, fantastic, nice and easy tip. But um, just as a matter of interest, where do you get the hair for ten thousand seedlings? 
Well, actually, we have a Sri Lankan army recruitment centre two miles down the road, and when they come in, they all get their heads shaved, and we just go and sweep up all their, uh, their, their, their hair. And, uh, and that's, um, that's what you have to do. So um, what we have is a way of, uh, you know, I hope you understand that sometimes things get a little foggy when you're looking between the army and the navy. Sometimes there are very easy situations where they've failed. Sometimes there are very easy situations where they've passed. But what it leads to is, in the end, next time you're sitting in the loo on a wooden loo seat, smoking a cigarette, reading a book, wiping your ass, somebody somewhere around the world has gone out to make sure you can go and do it with a clear conscience. <laughs>